So, good morning everyone and welcome back to uh, the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. Uh, so, we have been discussing about uh, total synthesis of a few alkaloids and today we will continue our discussion and also on total synthesis of one of the very important alkaloids called lysergic acid. Okay. So, the lysergic acid belongs to a family called ergot alkaloids. The lysergic acid belongs to a family called ergot alkaloids. So, so the ergot alkaloids have this basic skeleton, this, this is a tetracyclic skeleton. If you look at carefully, so they have the indole as their core structure. Okay, they have indole and two more six pumped ring fused with this indole. Okay. In fact, they were the first drugs used or first among the uh, they were among the first drugs used for the treatment of migraine headache and all okay and they believe that the tetracyclic core structure okay the tetracyclic core structure is responsible for its biological activity so most of the derivatives further derived from this basic skeleton they made sure that tetracyclic skeleton was kept as such only there was some functional group transformation around the tetracyclic ring. So, these are three uh, ergot alkaloids you can see this is ergoline okay, having a double bond here and festuclavin where the double bond is reduced and the ring junction is trans and pyroclovin. So, here also you can see the ring junction is trans. So, whenever the double bond is not there then the ring junction is trans in ergot alkaloids. Okay. And if you look at lysergic acid, so the double bond is there. Okay. You can see in the tetracyclic ring there is a double bond and here instead of methyl group you have carboxylic acid. So, that is why it is called lysergic acid and if you reduce the carboxylic acid then it is called lysergol. Okay. And the stereocenter, if it is opposite, then this is called isolysergol. There was one semi-synthetic derivative which is called pergolide and the difference between pergolide and lysergic acid is instead of methyl group here, so what you have is a propyl group, N-propyl is attached to the nitrogen and in this case on the left hand side instead of carboxylic acid what you have is CH2SME and this pergolide is used for the treatment of Parkinson's disease as of now. Okay. The more important analog of lysergic acid and infamous one is LSD. So, LSD is nothing but lysergic acid diethyl amide. So, that is this carboxylic acid is converted into the corresponding diethyl amine. Okay. So, this small change from carboxylic acid to the diethyl amide makes huge, huge difference. In fact, LSD is one of the most potent psychoactive agents known in the literature. If you look at the history of LSD that is lysergic acid diethyl amide, so this was accidentally discovered. In 1938, uh, when a scientist uh, called uh, Hoffman, when he was synthesizing this molecule, that is a derivative of lysergic acid, during the purification and crystallization, during the purification and crystallization, he felt something unusual. So, he had different sensations, so he immediately wanted to go home. So, he went home and then he was just lying down on the sofa. And then you could imagine so many things, you know, many are, you know, he had a very nice feeling of imagining, imagining so many things. So, then immediately he wrote to the other scientist and in Sanders said, this compound has some unique type of, uh, you know, effects. Okay. So, this molecule should be taken further. So, that is how this molecule was developed and in 1970, it was formally announced that LSD is a controlled substance. Okay. But today we are not going to talk about LSD, but what we are going to do 
is talk about two total synthesis of its precursor that is lysergic acid. The first total synthesis was uh, by as usual Woodward. So, Woodward thought uh, this can be easily obtained starting with the basic skeleton. So, that means you know you start with indole and try to append the two six membered rings over the indole. So, his starting material was uh, indole 3 propionic acid and uh, the key reactions which he used for the synthesis of lysergic acid are photocaps oscillation that is intramolecular photocaps oscillation to construct the first six membered ring and an aldol reaction to construct the second six membered ring. Okay. Let us see how he originally thought of making lysergic acid. So, his initial idea was as I said you can do an aldol here is not it? You can do an aldol to form the second six membered ring. Okay. Then the carboxylic acid can be easily added. Okay. That was the first major disconnection. Then the second disconnection was an SN2 substitution reaction. Okay. You have bromide alpha bromo ketone. So, you can do SN2 reaction uh, to introduce this uh, methyl amino ketone which can be further used for intramolecular aldar condensation. The third disconnection was obviously the CCO bond uh, because it is so clear that one can easily use Fotelkopf's acylation reaction to introduce the second six membered ring and this acid chloride of course, of course can be obtained from indole 3 indole propionic acid. Okay. Let us see how this yes, then the synthesis he started with uh, indole 3 propionic acid and first step was esterification uh, with the ethanol and HCl gave the ethyl ester. So, then this double bond. So, this double bond was uh, reduced under anionical hydrogenation condition. Then the ester was hydrolyzed to get the corresponding carboxylic acid. Okay. So, the acid then the NH was protected as uh, benzoate. Then the thionyl chloride converted the carboxylic acid into acid chloride which is uh, uh, the intermediate for the Fredelkopf's uh, acylation reaction. The Fredelkopf's acylation reaction worked well to get the first six membered ring added over the dihydro endo. So, after that alpha bromination was done okay, with a little bit uh, complex reagent, but it is not really complex uh, pyridine, uh, HBr and bromine. Okay. So, under photochemical condition, so he introduced a bromine alpha to the carbonyl group. So, once the bromine was introduced, the next step was to carry out the intermolecular SN2 reaction. So, he took the amine and then treated with this alpha bromo ketone reflects in benzene. So, the SN2 reaction took place. So, the next step is to remove the ketone so that you will have the diketone ready for the intramolecular aldol reaction. So, it was easily removed under acidic condition to get the 1, 5 diketone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, the 1, 5 diketone upon treatment with sodium ethoxide methanol underwent an intramolecular aldol reaction to give this 6 membered eno. Okay. And the free NH was again acetylated uh, using acetic anhydride pyridine. Then the alpha beta unsaturated ketone was selectively reduced to get the corresponding allylic alcohol. And once you have the allylic alcohol, it requires two steps to introduce a carboxylic acid synthetic equivalent. The synthetic equivalent for carboxylic acid in this case is cyanide. If you can introduce cyanide, then cyanide can be hydrolyzed to carboxylic acid. Okay. So, the allylic alcohol was uh, treated with first HCl. Okay, why HCl? Because this free NH should be protonated. Okay, so, after protonation, then thionyl chloride treatment, thionyl chloride treatment converted the allylic alcohol into the corresponding allylic chloride in this specific case. Then treat with sodium cyanide. So, it underwent uh, SN2 reaction and this upon treatment with sulfuric acid and methanol. 
So that means the cyanide you are hydrolyzing to carboxylic acid and in that process since you are using methanol the carboxylic acid which is formed also getting esterified because of the presence of acid and methanol. Okay. So the cyanide is directly hydrolyzed and esterified in one step to get the corresponding methyl ester. Okay. So once you have this uh, ester then what is next is only to hydrolyze. During the formation of uh, ester from cyanide, you one also should know that acetate also was removed. Okay, under acidic condition, one can remove the acetate to get the corresponding free ethane. So then, simple hydrolysis uh, was done uh, here. He has used potassium hydroxide, ran a nickel to get the corresponding carboxylic acid, which is the natural product. Okay. So this lysergic acid synthesis reported by Woodward uh, overall involved about 15 steps and yield was close to 1 percent. Okay. As I already mentioned, the key reactions involved in the synthesis of uh, lysergic acid reported by Woodward are portal calf's acylation that is intramolecular portal calf's acylation to get the first 6 membered ring and again an intramolecular aldol condensation reaction to get the second 6 member ring. Then we will move to the second total synthesis which was reported by Wolfgang Opalser. Okay. So his idea was when you look at this 6 membered ring, you have a double bond. Okay. So he thought if he can migrate this double bond here, okay, if he can migrate this double bond here, then it should be possible to use an intramolecular diel sol reaction to form this 6 member ring. Okay. Only thing is here the dienophile will be an imine. Okay. So then one can call this as intramolecular imino diel sol reaction. Okay. That was his original idea and let us see how he has done this. So as you can see here uh, again the starting material is uh, indole and with a substituent here so that you can introduce this diene which is required for the intramolecular diel sol reaction. Then you attach the dienophile which is required that is heterodienophile uh, required for the diel sol reaction. Then you carry out this intramolecular diel sol reaction followed by migration of the double bond and hydrolysis will give lysergic acid. So this is the simple strategy planned by Opalser for the total synthesis of racemic lysergic acid. Okay. Let us see how he actually carried out the total synthesis. For the synthesis of fragment A, he started with this uh, nitro carboxylic acid. Okay. So esterification of carboxylic acid with ethanol and HCl, he got the corresponding ethyl ester. Then this methyl group Okay, this methyl group was converted into this enamine that is done with dimethyl formamide dimethyl acetal in DMF. Okay. So basically you know you, you generate an anion, you generate an anion and then attack the DMF okay, to get the double. Then you reduce with uh, tin chloride. So what happens first? the nitro group is reduced to get the corresponding amine. Then this enamine also gets hydrolyzed. Once the enamine gets hydrolyzed, you get the aldehyde. Okay. So CH2, CHO you get. The CH2, CHO and then NH2, they will form aminol followed by dehydration. Uh, overall, what he got was the corresponding indole with an ester here. Okay. So what needs to be done for the next few steps? you have to attach the diene and also you have to attach the dienophile to this indole. Okay. So, so before that protect the indole nitrogen as entosylate. Okay. Then you reduce the ester with LH to get the corresponding primary alcohol and this primary alcohol can be further homologated. So here the introduction of diene um, he followed a unique method what he did was First, he took methyl acrylate and then treated with cyclopentadiene to get this bicyclic compound through 
Diels salt reaction. Then he deprotonated this carbon because that is attached to ester, then quenched with methyl formate. Basically, what he had done is he has introduced an aldehyde here. Okay. So, why he has introduced this aldehyde? I will tell you. So, once he had this B, that is the aldehyde bicyclic adduct, then this fragment A, that alcohol, he converted into the bromide followed by treatment with the tributyl phosphine, he made the Wittig salt. So, then the Wittig reaction with this aldehyde was done with uh, dimsyl anion. Okay. So, why this intermediate he wanted to make? So, if you look at this intermediate, this portion can undergo a retro diel salt reaction. Okay. The retro diel salt reaction will remove the cyclopentadiene. Okay remove the cyclopentadiene and it will generate the, the other diene which is required for the diels salt reaction. So, basically one of the double bonds of the diene is protected by cyclopentadiene. Okay, that will be released when the retro diels salt reaction takes place. This diene is not reactive, this diene is not reactive. So, that is why he has to follow this indirect method. Next, so he took this compound and then treated with uh, aqueous formaldehyde and dimethylamine. Okay. So, that means he is introducing a CH2N and dimethyl. Okay. This is nothing but managed reaction, is not it? So, upon treatment with aqueous formaldehyde and dimethylamine, he carried out a managed reaction at carbon number 3 of indole to introduce this functional group. Okay. What he has to do is he has to introduce one more carbon. For that he took nitromethane and dimethyl acetylene dicarboxylate. It underwent uh, a sort of SN2 reaction to get this CH2, CH2, NO2. Okay. From this CH2, NO2 he needs a double bond N and OR. So, he needs an imine. Okay, so, the imine should be there for an intramolecular imino diel salt reaction. Okay. So, what he did? First, he treated with sodium ethoxide methanol. So, that forms uh, uh, this intermediate. This intermediate when it forms, you can immediately recall. So, this is nothing but NEF reaction. Okay, if you have a CH2NO2, okay, NEF reaction, first you have to treat with base, then followed by treatment with titanium, titanium trichloride. Okay. So, what happens? this will be hydrolyzed to the aldehyde. Then that aldehyde will react with NH2OME to give this corresponding imine. Okay. So, now the dienophile is ready. What he needs is the diene should be released through the retro diel salt reaction. Then it can undergo spontaneous intramolecular 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. So, that was done at high temperature. So, 200 degrees, so that retro diel salt reaction took place and followed by intramolecular diel salt reaction gave this tetracyclic compound. Okay. So, now you have OME here, but in lysergic acid you have methyl group. Okay. So, just one oxygen you have to remove. So, that was done using fluoromethane sulfonate. It is a good methylating agent. Okay. So, what happens? So, first the nitrogen will be methylated. Okay. So, then the fluoride can attack and OME bond, NO bond can break to give the corresponding N methyl. Okay. So, what, what needs to be done? Now, you have to push the double bond here and hydrolyze the ester to carboxylic acid. If these two are done, synthesis of racemic lysergic acid is complete. Okay. So, the isomerization of the double bond was done with aluminum abalcum uh, to push uh, the alpha, beta and saturated ester to beta, gamma and saturated ester. Then simple hydrolysis that is alkaline hydrolysis hydrolyzed the ester to carboxylic acid. Thus, he completed the total synthesis of racemic lysergic acid. Okay. So, the key reaction as I mentioned was uh, 
intramolecular immunodeal salt reaction and overall it took 6 steps less than what Woodward has taken. Woodward took about 15 steps uh, whereas Pulsar took only 9 steps to complete the total synthesis. As a result, the overall yield also went from 0.78% uh, in the case of Woodward to 3.88% that is 4 times he got uh, better over yield than Woodward's. Okay. So now we have completed the total synthesis of uh, lysergic acid now. Now we will move to total synthesis of 3 or 4 more total synthesis of alkaloids before we move to total synthesis of steroids. Okay, thank you.